pet parents and welcome to another episode of Natural Pets TV. I'm joined by Dr. Ken, Dr. Jody, and Dr. Patrick. Okay, this next topic might be a little squeamish for some folks, but it really is an important topic and something that all pet parents must be aware of. Dr. Jody, urine and urinary issues are something that we encounter on a regular basis in the pet world. Let's talk about that. Urinary tract health is vitally important um, to the comfort of our, our dogs and also to the happiness of the pet parent because if you have a dog with a urinary tract problem that needs to go outside in the middle of the night or is having accidents, um, that usually sends you running into the vet. Urinary tract health begins with the filtration of the blood through the kidneys. Um, then that urine is produced, it travels through the ureters to the bladder. The bladder is a storage area for that urine. Um, we want to have a healthy bladder because we want that urine to be stored for a little while. We don't want it dribbling out through the urethra um, when it's not supposed to. And we can even have uh, puppies that are born with a congenital problem where that, that ureter that's supposed to go from the kidney to the bladder goes from the kidney to the urethra and bypasses the bladder. And then that pet's going to be dribbling all the time. So whenever there is any potential uh, urinary tract related problem, it's very important to bring in a urine sample to the veterinarian to have that examined and that's, that's where we start with our diagnostics. One of my pet peeves is um, bringing in the wrong type of urine sample. And sometimes it's, it's our fault or it's the staff's fault for not guiding that pet parent um, how to bring in that, that appropriate urine sample. And for me, that, that is a, a first morning urine that I'm usually looking for because that will allow us to rule out the most things. If we check a urine in the middle of the afternoon, um, we may be able to rule out a bladder infection, but we really can't do anything to assess kidney function because that dog has been drinking water all day. So what a first morning urine means is take them outside late at night so they can really empty their bladder. And then the morning urine will be a reflection of the most concentrated urine that the kidneys are able to produce. And so if that urine sample that we do a specific gravity on, we check that urine in the morning and it's very dilute and it should be concentrated, right away that starts to tell us that there might be some underlying kidney disease. So having urinary accidents isn't always necessary a, a bladder infection. It could be kidney disease, it could be crystal problems. And so that's what cancer. we're going to start talking about. Or cancer, <laughs> absolutely. And along the lines of what Dr. Jody was saying too, so, um, so that urine sample collection, some Sometimes there are, there are times that the owner can collect it and bring in there are other times that it should be collected directly from the sure. bladder. So <laughs> if you're going to the vet because your dog is having, or, or cat or whatever species, I know run dogs today, is having a urinary problem, try to prevent them from urinating before okay. they get to the vet. That means maybe not letting them outside before you leave the house, driving very cautiously. <laughs> as you're going to the vet and then getting them right in the door and hopefully the vet and the tech team is all aware and ready to right away take the dog to the back because what we might have to do if we if we suspect a dog is having urinary tract infection it's really best that the urine is directly collected from the bladder via a process called cystocentesis where a needle is put directly through the abdominal wall into the bladder ideally with an ultrasound probe so we can visualize everything but before ultrasounds were around or in some practices you don't have one and you, do, you can feel a bladder that is sufficient we provided your comfortable your technique and that lets you get a sterile urine sample so besides the basic components of the urinalysis including the uh, the specific gravity the presence of protein sugar ketones white blood cells red blood cells we want to take that urine and put it on culture medium often in, in a laboratory and allow that bacteria to potentially grow and that way we know that if urine that we got right from the bladder um, has bacteria that grows, then we actually have a urinary tract infection versus if the pet just pees it into a receptacle, sometimes they can pick up bacteria and other substances right at the surface. So sometimes it does take that further looking process, but also the imaging that we might use to attain our sample, that ultrasound probe, can tell us a lot about what's going on in the bladder. We can look at the thickness of the bladder. We can look to see if there's crystals, which almost looks like a snow globe that you would shake up, or sometimes we even catch like the presence of very abnormal thickening to the bladder, which can make us think there might be cancer, especially with older pets that are having urinary tract problems. We really want to think about all the potential spectrum of problems that could be contributing to urinary tract disease. 
sometimes that sample that they bring in is a little bit older sample too and then you can get some misleading or false results because as that urine sits outside the body the pH which is one of the parameters that we measure can falsely elevate or crystals can form uh, and that's actually going on outside the body and not inside and then we might be misled to think that there's actually a crystal problem um, conversely the cystocentesis where we place the needle in the bladder well that could cause false blood uh, so sometimes there are reasons why we need to do both kinds of samples even. Right. And, and we don't want to think of the urinary tract as in space by itself either uh, because the phenomenon of, of increased water consumption, increased urination mm -hmm. actually may be a different problem. Absolutely. Have nothing to do with the urinary system. We may be looking at hormonal problems. Um, Dr. Patrick alluded to, to sugar uh, in, the, in the urine which is si signaled to possible diabetes. So there are a number of diseases that will manifest primarily as a um, what appears to be a urinary disease, which in fact it's not. I think the classic example that uh, I've seen over the years is the unspayed female that has a raging uh, uterine infection and she's exhibiting uh, signs of increased water consumption, increased um, urination that owners mistaken as a bladder infection. Absolutely, and, that, and that's a really good point. Like in the process of, of working up a problem that we suspect is just coming from the urinary tract, besides just testing urine, we might need to look even further. So blood testing, extremely crucial to look for some basic values that might indicate that the kidneys are not doing their job quite as well. Um, from, from my perspective, I look at blood urea, nitrogen, creatinine, phosphorus, and also a value called SDMA. And collectively, we look at all those and we try to see if it's within a normal parameter or if it's elevated or if it's decreased. And, and all those things can mean different things when it comes to determining a diagnosis. And then other diseases besides kidney diseases, which can make the body think, that may, and can appear to a pet owner like there's kidney disease, like Cushing's disease, which is elevated production of cortisol, typically related to a benign pituitary tumor, causes a dog to drink more, therefore urinate more and urinate more dilute urine, along with increased appetite and panting and behavior changes and things like that. So always think about that whole body holistic approach to addressing the issue. Maybe start by looking at the urine, but be ready to look deeper. Right. Liver problems. Liver problems, right. absolutely. And, and hypothyroidism, which may or may not be related to Cushing's disease. And um, checking the blood work along with the urine can become a prognostic indicator. Mm -hmm. um, we, we can actually catch kidney disease earlier by checking urine than blood. A lot of people come in for their senior blood workup thinking they're going to rule out kidney disease. That BUN and the creatinine that you mentioned are normal, but the urine specific gravity could be really low. Mm -hmm. And we want to get on top of that with some of our natural supplements that can start helping kidney health. But if the BUN and creatinine are elevated, well, at that time, then 75% of the kidneys are already damaged. Um, another a test to do on the urine would be the urine protein creatinine ratio and that's another prognostic indicator uh, where it shows that they're losing protein through their urine and I find that it's a lot more difficult to manage patients well long term if they have that elevation in addition to the other tests. Right. I feel like there's a lot of um, urinary issues that we can potentially avoid just by keeping pets sufficiently hydrated. Mm -hmm. I think that with the reliance of society on dry foods, pets then have to drink their, their water in order to um, process their foods properly and filter out toxins through the kidneys and the liver. But if you feed a pet uh, that, a diet that's already moist, they're eating their water, so they're going to have less drive to drink water elsewhere. Like what if the only water source that's available is some like plant water containment device and they're drinking fertilizer and, 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 um, f and possibly parasites that come from soil. So I always really try to motivate dog owners to make sure the diet is moist so that the pet eats the food, eats the water instead of having to drink it from a separate source. And I think that's an important point uh, when it comes to um, urinary crystals and urinary stones because just the presence of those crystals in the urine does not mean that the animal will have stones because the solution to pollution is dilution and we know that the more uh, fluid that an animal takes the less likely that these are to coalesce into stones and so 
it, it may be as easy as increasing the water content as opposed to going to a specialized diet to prevent stones um, may be inappropriate. And, and actually, in, in what I've seen over the years is these diets are not foolproof in doing that. And so uh, I like to rely on water more than I do on the diets. The crystal detection is another uh, good reason to make sure that we're checking that first morning urine yeah. because after they eat, uh, we all get what's called a normal postprandial alkaline tide. That that means the pH of our body and of that urine is temporarily elevated, which allows the struvite crystals to form. So if we're checking a urine at that point in time, those crystals might be temporarily normal and, and may totally go away, then we might misdiagnose it as a crystal problem, and then some veterinarians will put them on a long-term prescription exactly. diet for that, uh, which can push the pH too far the other way, and then we can get calcium oxalate crystals. Exactly. So, And indeed, uh, in the cat world, that happened. They developed all those... Um, urinary preventative diets out in the grocery store and were being used on animals that didn't have urinary problems and then we got the opposite kind of issue. Because I use homemade dog or homemade diets in my practice, um, we find that we have less less problems with regards to uh, urinary stone and crystal activity, um, and even if they're present, like you said. You gave a great list of um, some of the um, specific blood tests that we should be monitoring um, if an individual has kidney disease. You mentioned phosphorus, um, because I'm such a lover of the raw meat diet, but meat mm -hmm. is high in phosphorus, right. and so we have to make sure that that's balanced with calcium, and especially if we have kidney disease. So I like to promote the nitrogen trap idea where we feed dark blended leafy greens to grab the waste protein, BUN, blood urea nitrogen, that urea nitrogen is a waste product of protein. We can grab that, move that out in the poop, but we still have to do something to be binding that phosphorus and taking that out so it doesn't become a burden to the kidneys. And there's a variety of different products that we can use to accomplish that. Even um, probiotics can potentially help to Absolutely. make sure there's not too much nitrogen production because right. your gut is filled with bacteria, both the small and long int large intestine, and especially in the large intestine, you can have nitrogen producing bacteria that can cause your body to then absorb nitrogen and that could elevate the blood urea nitrogen level therefore making you think maybe there's kidney disease or possibly worsening kidney disease so probiotics are beneficial for so many things and that's why we want to always keep the gut health very normal so we don't have big vacillations in healthy gut bacteria versus bad bacteria so I suggest probiotics for dogs with kidney disease too. Absolutely. 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 No, no question. Yep. And another parameter that we like to make sure gets measured as we're monitoring kidney disease, we might not be able to stop the progression of kidney disease, but if we can monitor the side things that are going wrong and tweak those, then we can help the quality of life and extend the longevity. Uh, one of those things is potassium. Um, I would say in most cases, potassium is low in kidney disease, but not always. There's some that run a higher potassium, and if we don't measure it, we don't know. Right. So you don't want to, across the board, start feeding a whole bunch of bananas to your kidney dog, which are high in potassium, because that could cause a problem. Right. But if we identify it's low, well, then we can supplement potassium in a variety of different ways. And, and, and all of us here are you know, proponents of, of more natural diets. But even then, with animals with kidney failure, we have to watch them as well because some of these uh, products that people use in these homemade um, uh, raw diets and whatnot are high in structural proteins, which are not digested and promote the very bacteria that Dr. Patrick was talking about that produce all of the nitrogenous uh, waste that then gets back into the bloodstream and raises the urea nitrogen. Mm -hmm. And then we can't forget that we need to monitor blood pressure. Right. Yes. Um, there's a correlation right. between high blood pressure and kidney disease, and if we know that it's present, um, a lot of times I'm able to balance blood pressure with Hawthorne. Um, and we forget sometimes that the kidneys are involved in making, in making blood. Uh, one of the ways yes. to tell that you're at end stage uh, kidney disease is if that hematocrit, that measure of the red blood cells, is low. And then we can maybe intervene with a little bit of chlorophyll. That can be helpful. Mm -hmm. Um, but sometimes it's helpful for a guardian to know, you know, where where their pet's at with it, so they can prepare. Yeah, pets, uh, both cats and dogs that have more advanced kidney disease can develop anemia of chronic disease, or as a result of their kidneys not producing erythropoietin as much as they should, which stimulates red blood cell production, they develop um, low red blood cell levels, which could make them lethargic and not feel as well and not eat as well and just kind of bring the whole energy down. So that's where um, 
pairing, blood testing, and, and the whole monitoring is in extremely important. And I think to bring up, we'd be remiss if we didn't bring up with urinary tract health that we want to empower pet parents to uh, learn how to give subcutaneous fluids at home. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, we can really help them a lot with the intravenous fluids I in the clinic, but they can do a lot to maintain uh, that urinary tract health by making sure they're well hydrated when they don't want to drink enough on their own right. um, by giving those sub-Q fluids very easily under the skin at home. Mm -hmm. and, and another thing with regards to the urinary tract, especially going back to crystals and stones, the work that Dr. Buffington has done showing that uh, the, a person's state of mind uh, and the stress level in the household mm -hmm. um, can trigger genes that then will take a genetic predisposition for uh, um, making crystals and, and making stones and actually turn it on so that it becomes more pathogenic. Whereas if we can enrich the environment more, uh, these animals have less as a tendency for that to happen. Mm -hmm. Certainly. And we use, utilize herbs um, yeah. and dandelion, parsley, natural diuretics to keep, help keep things flushing through, um, gravel root, um, equisetum, all those things that we can incorporate in to help naturally with your near tract health. I use marshmallow extract as yeah. well to mm -hmm. help to create a good barrier on the inside mm -hmm. of, the, of the bladder and also um, cr oh, cranberry extract too. The, mm -hmm. there, there are components in cranberries that can help to inhibit the binding of bacteria to the inner lining of the bladder wall, therefore mm -hmm. reducing the potential for urinary tract infection. So there's many, many things that can be beneficial. So also if, you're, if your conventional veterinarian isn't gonna guide you on something like the use of supplements, maybe seek out a consultation with a holistic veterinarian to get some interpretation, integrate that approach. And I'm so glad you brought up the specifics about cranberry because so many people reach for that and become disappointed when it doesn't work. Right. And it's not that it doesn't work, it's that it only works right. with uh, preventing that adherence of the bacteria and sometimes that's not what the problem is. Right. So. We don't want like um, high fructose corn syrup cranberry juice. <laughs> we want to think about right. the natural component. Maybe it's in a capsule. Maybe it's a loose powder. Exactly. There's a variety of products that your veterinarian can advise you on. Mm -hmm. So as you can see, it's very important to be working with an expert and maybe a team of experts as you're looking at urinary health issues. Thanks for joining us here on Natural Pets TV. Hey everybody, a lot of great information, a lot of great discussion going on here, and we want to keep that going in the comment section down below. Now don't forget, you should subscribe to this channel because we've got more great guests, more great episodes coming throughout the year, so please subscribe. And if you want to find out more information about our guests, I'm going to tell you how right now Dr. Ken can be found at thewelldog.com, Dr. Jody at drjodysnaturalpets.com, and Dr. Patrick at patrickmahaney.com. And as always, you can reach out to us at Pet World Insider. All right, folks, thanks for joining us. We'll see you soon.